I did it! I made it to my one year surgiversary <laughs> for Tarlov cyst disease. I had my surgery with Dr. Fagenbaum on March 23rd, 2022. So that means today is March 23rd, 2023. And I am one year officially post-op and I could not be more excited. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, so I figured, you know what, one year anniversary, it is time to give you an update. So if you are just tuning in for the very first time, then please, please, please consider watching my other videos because I definitely have a lot of other videos that go through my whole process. So the time I got diagnosed, I started just videoing and sharing on YouTube because I had a hard time finding information out about Tarlov cyst disease. So I thought if I could go through it or if I was going through it, obviously, and I could talk about it, then maybe I'd be able to help somebody else out. So please consider watching those. I have leading up to surgery and then surgery week and then going into my recovery. And the only reason I haven't really done anything lately is because I've been busy being back to life. And it's also my busy season at work. So I've just been kind of swamped. But one year, oh, okay. I will give a little recap to what my year has been like, but I know the burning question that you probably have if you are tuning into this as somebody who lives with Tarlov cyst disease or you're contemplating having the surgery or any of those things, I'm sure your burning question is, how are you doing now and was surgery worth it? My disclaimer, as I always like to give in my videos, this is my perspective. My perspective isn't always the same as somebody else's. So please just take that for that. Um, I'm going to tell you how I'm feeling and what I went through, but everybody is different. We all know that. So not everybody has the same experience that I have or even, you know, the same symptoms leading up to surgery. So all of those things play a factor. But that being said, I am one thousand percent grateful that I did the surgery and yes it was 100% worth it for me so I am in such a better place than I was a year ago it's so crazy to think that it's been a year some days it feels like I just had surgery yesterday and not necessarily physically but just like mentally and some days it feels like it was so long ago like I don't even remember it but one year ago 100% feel so much better and worth it for me. Yes. So how, what are some symptoms that I'm feeling now? I'm sure that's what you want to know. Now that I'm one year out, what am I feeling? Most of the pain is gone. I mean, I almost experienced a lot of the pain, the original pain that I was having almost completely gone after I had surgery, like almost immediately. But I definitely still had some little bladder tweaks here and there, still had surgery recovery pain. I mean, that's going to be completely normal. But on a daily basis, post-surgery, I'm not having any of the normal pain that I had prior to surgery with Tarlov cyst disease. The, the only pain I would say that I have is in my back, my low back, because I did have surgery in my sacrum area, and I had seven cysts that were wrapped, and obviously I was having some bone erosion. And so I would say the, like, discomfort that I feel is if I lean up against something or I lay flat on the ground, which I don't normally do. But you know, if like if you're at the dentist and they have you flat on that dental chair, I can leave that sometimes feeling it in my back. But that's I think more so just from the pressure being on my tailbone because they did have to cut a hole out of my tailbone and replace it with this polymer plastic that they say can take up to two years to dissolve. So I still think I'm feeling that tenderness, um, but not on like an everyday, like if I just lean up against something too hard or somebody bumps me there or I, you know, I've talked about this before. I like swing my laptop bag or my purse around my shoulder and it comes back and it kind of hits me square in the back that's when I can feel it. So that is definitely still a little sensitive, not just sitting here, like sitting here, I'm fine. Um, but that would be, I would say the, the worst symptom, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. But I did a couple of 
videos ago, if you are have been following along, I did have some pain in my upper cervical spine area that I was really concerned about because it was causing a lot of numbness in my arm. And I did finally get an MRI of that. And I sent it off to Dr. Fagenbaum to review, which he was really great about that. I got in pretty quickly with a phone call and he looked over everything and said, nope, everything looks good. There are no cysts there. So that was confirmed. It was just more of, hey, you're getting old. <laughs> There's that. And I think I have some degenerative d disc disease. There was definitely some pinching going on. Um, but the nice thing is the last two months, my job has been really pretty physical. I've been doing a lot of lifting and moving and, and carrying things, which I normally like half of the year, I do a lot of computer work half of the year. I'm kind of more physical in my job. It just depends on the season. And I think that a lot of just being physical and being active kind of helped, you know, build up a little bit of muscle strength and um, my symptoms are gone. So I don't know. I'm just saying that that was my therapy just because I was doing more and using my arm and stuff more and I was able to correct that. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, but now I know that there's no cysts there, so I don't have that worry, which is amazing. Okay. So other things post surgery one year. What did I learn? I learned a lot. So the couple of things that I'm going to, you know, kind of bring to the front of my mind is one piece of advice that I've always shared probably in almost every single video, if not every single video, is listen to your body. Okay, that is the most important thing. If you learn anything from this whole experience is to listen to your body. Don't shut it up. Don't try to ignore it. Just listen to your body. And when it's telling you to stop or, hey, there's something wrong, then you need to act on that. That leads into my second learning curve or piece of advice is be your own healthcare advocate. That is so important. So many of us that have gone through this disease, they don't, I don't know, there's the doctors just aren't supportive. And this is no disrespect to the medical community at all. For many of us, it takes getting to that right doctor and we might not have the resources or be in a place where we have the resources to do that right off the bat. So it is a matter of ruling things out, just like with many other rare diseases. It's always a matter of ruling things out before you can get to the real answer. You have to be your own healthcare advocate and don't give up on yourself. Use your voice, find somebody that will support you in that if that's what you need, if that's a a family member or a friend, or it's even a fellow Tarlov sist sister or mister, or if it's a social worker or a nurse or somebody, just find that somebody if you need that. Otherwise, be your own healthcare advocate and don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Even when all those doctors tell you, no, it's not this, or no, it can't be that, or you're crazy, we don't see what you're seeing. Just keep going until you can get more answers and then get to the right doctor, which is exactly what I did. So do your research there. Tarlov Cyst Disease Foundation is great for that, by the way. I'm not affiliated with them, but I strongly support and love what they are doing for our community. Okay, so what else did I learn? Know when too much is too much and be okay with that. So I definitely did too much too soon. And I was just very stubborn in my recovery. At about five months, maybe six, I don't even think it was six, I ran my first ever 5K. Okay, that's 3.1 miles. It's not like forever long, but in my early 40s, I've never run a 5K. I've always walked them. I've done a million walking of them, but I was determined in my recovery to get out I was lucky enough that the weather was really great here because my surgery was at the end of March and I live in the Midwest. And so it was spring and it was turning into summer and, and all of that. So I did a lot of walking out in my neighborhood and then I just was feeling good. I was feeling good. So I was going with it. And I was determined because I had to give up so much with this disease that I wanted to set a goal and tell myself that I was still capable of achieving goals and doing things that I was setting myself out to do. And so I ran my first 5K at the end of September, and I definitely think that that was too soon. Uh, my body told me after that was done that like, hey, you gotta cut that off, that, that was too much. 
So I have not been running since, and I'm, I'm grateful for what I learned in that process. But, uh, and I'm, I'm proud of myself for achieving that goal and my body for allowing me to do that. But then also my body for telling me to like, take a break. So that's what I've been doing, uh, but I'm still back to all of the things I love, like traveling and road tripping. I can sit for long periods. I can stand for long periods. I can walk. I can do all of those things again. Um, so that, but definitely like know your limits and, and listen to your body. Again, going to that first point, but just know your limits and know when too much is too much and then be okay with like dialing it back down. The other point that I, I learned, this this doesn't have anything to do with my body necessarily, because I, I still say that this disease is just as, you know, obviously it's physical, but it's just as much mental and emotional too. Very, very, very much so. The whole roller coaster of emotions that you'll be going on with this. But the other piece of advice, or I guess thing that I learned is that people will surprise you in good ways and in bad. So in good ways, there have been so many strangers that have reached out to me because of me sharing my story and my journey that that has impacted my life and motivated me and kept me inspired and, you know, given me the like will to just keep going. So strangers that many of you that are watching, you have surprised me and just supported me and impacted my journey in, in ways that you probably don't even know. My friends and family showed up for me. They gave me grace. They supported me. They checked in on me. They, you know, brought me meals or took care of me or just stayed with me or whatever the case was. They just supported that. But then there were all those people, there were those people, I shouldn't say all those people, that saw where I could no longer serve them and they, I lost people. And that happens, you know, I, I, was having a hard time with it. That was part of the um, emotional and, and mental part. And I've come to the, you know, realization now it's just part of human nature. And honestly, I'm trying not to take it too personally. You know, people have got their own lives and they need to move on to, and they're not in the same place that you are. But I did lose some people in my life um, during this journey. And it just is another part of the learning process. Um, so those are kind of some of the quick things that come to mind over this past year, but it's definitely been full of ups and downs, mostly ups in a really great way because I can absolutely tell you right now that I am in such a better place at this moment in my life than I was a year ago, two years ago. I mean, my symptoms started in August of 2020 and now it is 2023 and I can honestly say like I am in just such a better place in life. So that is my one year post Tarlov cyst disease surgery. I'm wearing my official Care for the Rare Tarlov Cyst Disease Awareness shirt. I say that because I created, I designed it. I do offer it available for purchase. I don't make any money off of it. I actually found a website that will allow me to donate the proceeds to um, the Tarlov Cyst Disease Foundation. Again, I'm not affiliated with them, but I didn't, I just wanted to make the shirt for myself and anybody else that might want one to just kind of help educate others or bring up that, that topic. Tarlovday.com. We are getting ready for the hopefully first ever National Tarlov Cyst Disease Awareness Day on May 16th. For any of you that have been following along, if you are in the United States and you are interested in helping by um, sending a request for your state to proclaim Tarlov Cyst Disease Awareness Day on May 16th, then please reach out. Um, go to our website, tarlovday.com. We've got all of the information that you need to be able to, to support this campaign. I know a couple of years ago, I think there was a group of people that did this, but you know, we're really trying to turn Tarlov Cyst Disease Awareness Day into a national and even potentially international thing. So state proclamations was kind of our first way of trying to do that. Um, so please check out the website, consider supporting and getting involved. We're going to offer some other ideas and ways that you can, you know, things that you can do that day to show awareness or um, show support or start educating people and just making other people with this disease feel validated and supported. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, so that's one year post-surgery for Tar Tarlov cyst disease. And I hope that you uh, learned a little something and thank you so much for following along my journey. Bye guys.